Minutes. Okay, we're going to do a quick check here and, and check the fuel pump from the power distribution center. You've done this before? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, so what we need to do is pull this off. Hopefully the label's there, but you can see there's the fuel pump relay. Yes. We identify which one it is. It's this guy right here. So I'm going to pull this out. And this vehicle does run, by the way. This is just just an extra. So we're going to put that put that there. Put that way. Yeah, let's set that on that uh, box right there. Yes, sir. So we're going to pull that out. And then the easiest thing I find is using this guy right here. ES Wave, you activate. It's a part number 0780. But what I really loved is that they had a plug to put the relay in. So oh, you yeah. can dynamically check it. But... When you plug this thing in, you need to look at that uh, the, the load. If it's red, it, the, the polarity is reversed. So you just need to flip it over. Okay. So what this means is that we we have we just validated we have B plus power to one side, and we have ground completed through the pump, right? So if this light was not on, we would need to check and make sure we have power on the plus side. If we had power on the plus side and the light wasn't on, we, we have an open circuit between here and the, and the tank. Right? Yes, sir. So you could have a connection problem or whatever. You could hang this thing down and go back there and start wiggling, touching, maybe tap the tank. If the light started to flip, flip on, you know you've got a problem back there. Okay. The other quick thing we can do, just hold that. I'm going to flip and just hold it where I can see it. Okay. We're going to turn the key on. This should come on for two seconds. That's going to validate that the computer is, able, is turning on the fuel pump for two seconds, right? All right, so this thing just helped us validate that, that we have a control signal. We have a circuit back to the pump. We can actually hear the pump if we listen. You hear it? Yes, sir. Pump's running. This thing has a momentary on and off switch, but what we're going to do is we're going to hook up the PicoScope. We're going to look at the load with the current probe. Okay. We're also going to look at the voltage, supply voltage, and we'll watch that and we'll log it. So with Pico, we've got the Pico 4425 plugged in here. We need this current probe, and we just hook it around here, but we don't know what the polarity is. So okay. if our, if our if our signal goes backwards, we can just flip this thing over. We need a connection. So on the Pico, blue is channel A. So we're going to undo this. And plug this guy into the, into the scope. And if you want to just hook these two leads up here. Just back, back channel those. And then I'm going to hook up the, the red lead into our the power supply. So you can watch the voltage and the amperage at the same time. Okay. And did I forget to hit record? I forgot to hit record back here. But So for first time Pico scope users or lab scope users, if you see static like that, what does that mean? Well, this thing's auto ranging. So look at this. Look at the vertical scaling. Okay. 50, 50 millivolts. So it's it's seeing all kinds of noise and whatnot. We'll go. We have to configure what probe we're looking at here. So so in this case, I need one ground clip that we're going to find a ground here. So here we go. And like the thrust, the battery negative is right here. And then I'm going to turn turn on channel B. Here we'll go on. We're going to go to 20 volts. And this is just a one-to-one -one probe. Okay. And we're going to plug this guy in here. So, okay. So this is the power supply, the green one here. So we can see it goes to a little over 12 volts. So we're going to go here, so we can watch the amperage and the and the voltage, right? 
So on this, I'm going to go, I'm going to move it all the way to the top. This is a CA60. It goes up to 60 amps. Uh, this fuel pump uh, probably draws normally about 9 amps or so, but on the stall current, it may go over 20. Okay. So I want to go above the, the 20 amp range. So here we would pick the probe. We have to define the probe. And it's this guy right here. It says 60 amp current clamp, 20 amp mode or 60 amp mode. So we're going to pick that one. Now you asked about the, the question about the noise. Mm -hmm. So this thing went to an auto scaling mode again. And what I like to do, this says minus 5 amps or 50 amps. Okay. And you see how noisy it is? Yeah. It's got a lot of noise. So you can actually filter that. You can click this low pass filtering, and oh, it basically yeah, exactly. puts a nice, nice clean signal. Uh, if we, where's our ground at? Okay, so you see that little horizontal bar. We can hit this zero button, and that'll put it right on zero. Okay, and then what I want to do is just turn this on. Now, if we see the, if we see this go negative, then we we've got to go the other way, right? We go up. Yeah, it went up. Yeah. No, it's going down to the bottom. See? Oh, okay. So we got to flip it. So we're, we're going to flip this over. And what I normally like to do, so we know we're going to go in the right right range. I mean, we double check that, right? So there's our fuel pump. But what I want to catch is the, the, the sweep. So there's a couple things we can do. We can crank up the sampling and then give it a longer sweep. Since we're standing right at the car, we should be able to just let it go. So I'm going to hit it on, go off, and then I'm going to hit stop. All right, so let's take a look at this signal here. We're going to zoom here and here real tight. So the first thing I see, look at this. You see this, this right here? Yeah. You know what that is? That's just the switch here. It's not a good switch. And so that's the contact is actually bouncing. And look at the current. You can see the current. Doing kind of bouncing as well. It's a little wiggle. So I wouldn't even worry about that. But let's go measure the current. So the stall current on this, 21, it's a little over 21 amps. And then it starts spinning up. And we can come on over here until it kind of normalizes. And you see we have a repeating pattern here where there's kind of a low one right there? Yeah. That's where we can measure how fast that pump is turning. So I'm going to go at the beginning of that, that low one. And I'm going to go at the same point on the other side. So that's one, one pump rev. The nice thing about the Pico is it gives you the RPM figure right there. Down the bottom corner. Right, right away. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's reset the zoom. I'm going to go back to we'll look at the voltage rise here. And this thing just needs a little bit of practice, you know, to, to get that. Since we're kind of we're, we're spiking off the screen there, I'm going to go down here to the vertical scaling, and I'm going to bring this down a little bit. Then I can bring this down, and you can see the you can see where the voltage where it really loads it down. Right, it pulls a lot of amperage. It's pulling the, the voltage down, but the voltage didn't drop way down. I mean, we're measuring it up here. We suspect if we had a voltage drop problem, we could go, you know, go back further and right. see what the see what the loss is. But I don't suspect we have any voltage drop here because we're we're actually pulling twenty, you know, it's making twenty two amps, right? Yes, sir. Or it's pulling twenty two amps. So if we if we were only able to pick, pull about eight or nine amps, then I would suspect we have some mm -hmm. current, current limiter basically is is a high resistance. So. That's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and um, do a save. So this is another good practice. Um, since we do have this vehicle in here, we can select from recent vehicles and go down to the Chevrolet Silverado here.
pulls up the VIN and all that good stuff that we had indicated earlier. Uh, in the label, we can type uh, fuel and pick fuel pump current. And then I'll say at PDC uh, via U activate, right? We're going to call this a good one. And then on this one, it's going to be fuel pump voltage, right? So fuel pump voltage. And we're basically doing the same thing. So I'm just going to copy that text there. And we'll paste that in there. And we'll just say good. And uh, we'll say testing the fuel pump. It's good. It's a good idea to put all your notes in here because then if you're going to come back to it, you can understand what it was that you were doing. And then I'm going to hit save. And this is already going into the folder that we had saved stuff before. And what I normally like to do is at the end of that file name that Pico automatically creates with the date and time, I just want to put in my notes on what I can do to search. So I would say fuel pump current. Okay. It's already got Chevrolet Silver Auto 1500 in there. So um, what you're doing is you're adding some tags or, you know, to the file name so you can search for that later. And we'll hit save. Easier to identify it later. Easier to identify it later. Uh, another cool thing uh, that I recently learned, usually when you're trying to save your, your patterns, since we've got A is blue, blue the blue should be at the top. And then, okay. Then the red should be at the bottom. There's a quick way to get there. If you right click, and right here it says auto arrange axes. Axis. See what it did? Um, it put the blue up top and it put the the B channel B at the bottom down here. And we'll just zoom in a little bit here and here. Look at that switch. Wow. That switch has got a lot of a lot of noise. And then uh, we can measure when it loaded that pump. There's the voltage right there. And then it started rising up. As soon as the pump started spinning, it started rising up. And, uh, and we can drag this out and get some more time on there. And you can see we can drag the other cursor down here. Put it right there on the line. So when the pump and normalizes, see, that's almost what, two volts? Uh, no, the delta there is about 795 oh, volts. Okay. So I forget that so it has that much. But uh, you can see the dynamic range. So if, the, if this pulled the voltage way down, then we've got a, probably got a power supply problem or we've got a voltage drop on this side. So, so anyways, that's it. Easy as pie. Oh, so right. that makes it kind of nice to be able to just check it right here. Right yeah, here. I really like that tool.